Hey everybody, welcome to this week's edition of the Weekly Bugscope. Hope you guys are doing well. This is Issa, your host of the broadcast. Hope you're having a great week today. Make sure you like and like the comment, add that reaction to it, whether you are saying hello and tuning in from Facebook or Twitch or YouTube or here on HAPS or even Periscope if you still have access to it. Uh, welcome and come on in and make sure you say hello in the chat. All of the comments, no matter what platform you're tuning in from, are aggregated here onto the HAPS platform. So yeah, hope you guys are having a great week. Welcome to the Bugscope, where I take you on a virtual field trip into some topic within the world of entomology. Uh, and today I'm saying farewell to the old dissection scope that I've been using. It's not really that old, but to the dissection scope I have been using over the last, I guess, four years. And I received a notification like 10 minutes or 20 minutes before this broadcast that the new one is on the way and nearly here. So it could even arrive during this last broadcast. So very exciting. Let me just get a book to prop up my... Um, my microphone here too. Okay, cool. Um, hi, Fiona. How are you doing? Hi, Craig. Hi, Angela. Hey, Linda. Blue Velvet. Hello. Thanks for the high award. And let me just switch this around a little bit. Put the little bug scope banner thingy in the corner there. Cool. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's a very exciting day. Um, here I have the dissection scope that I have been using, which is the Like It Easy Four. And the one that's on the way, well, it doesn't have like a simple name like this one does, but it has, it's trinocular and it's my own. Um, thanks to contributions from you guys, the HAPS Awards have contributed to the purchasing of this new scope, as well as um, the Patreon funds and also Super Hearts from Periscope. I've been saving up for a while now. And also those, all those who have supported the GoFundMe that I made for it a couple of months ago. So really excited that this day is finally here and I will do another broadcast at some point, probably this weekend of um, with that new scope so you can check it out. Um, yeah, very exciting. Uh, yeah, so um, one thing that's super cool about HAPS, which is different from Periscope 2, is that I can already, I can use my iPhone as a second camera. So I do have that here and we're going to take a look at this bug that I found in the backyard and I want you guys to guess what it is. So I'll go bring it on screen now. Hi Pablo, how's it going? Hey Maron, good to see you. Hope you guys are well. Um, also my cat is here um, lounging on the surface <laughs> of the computer. Let me, I have to show you guys how my cat is right now. Here's Mika. Mika, hold on. I can't even move my, I can't even move this because she's lounging on top of everything. All right, here's Mika, the cat, just like right in the bug scope here, getting the, the VIP um, lounge room front row tickets. <laughs> yep. Um, hi, Christine. Hello, over in Switzerland. Great to have you here. Hello, Peter. Hi, Pablo. Um, Doing well, thanks. Hi, Matthias. Okay, yeah, invertebrate guessing. So I'll bring it on screen now. Um, here we go. All right. Oh, it ran around the cup. Need to relocate it. Um, okay, close ups. Always good to have a pair of forceps to use when you're handling insects, especially if they're small, because you don't want to squish them. Let's see, let's see. All right, here's our bug. Oh, there's a little springtail in there too. So I gave that one away. But here is this insect that, are, that um, I found in the backyard under some leaf litter. I will adjust the focus for us. Hi, Kevin. How are you doing? Hello, over. I'm guessing you're in California. This is, my name is Issa, everybody. Hi, Jay. How are you doing today? So here's our little insect friend. And go ahead and put whatever guesses as to what insect group this is. This is. Um, what kind of insect is this? This is, I don't, I haven't identified it yet to species, 
but I can tell you that this is an insect that, um, I mean, I only know what to order. So insect orders are like butterflies and moths, Lepidoptera, um, beetle, like what David has said right there. Let me move it so it stays in the frame. Then there's Neuroptera, which is lace net-winged insects. And then there's Odonata, uh, like what Linda said, dragonfly. Uh, there's also flies, Diptera. This is a larval form. And um, David did guess it. It's a larval beetle of some kind. So just like butterflies and moths, beetles go through complete metamorphosis. Hi, Wesley. Good to see you. Beetles go through complete metamorphosis and they go through the egg, larval, pupil, and adult stages. And for beetles, their larval, their larval forms are really diverse. Some of them, you, you see them and they look like the typical grub, that white and curled, uh, very soft grub with a hard head capsule that you oftentimes find um, underneath rocks and things like that that usually are holding on to vegetation from and sucking on the, the roots of plants and other vegetation that might be in the garden. So they're sometimes seen as not very beneficial. Okay, our, our little guy's running away, so I'll bring him or her or bring them back into focus. And as you can probably guess from the way it's running away, it does like to be hidden underneath the leaf litter. Um, I found it on one of the back steps when I was clearing it off, clearing all the leaf litter away. <clears throat> yeah, so this is a, a baby beetle, and this one is a probably a predaceous one. I don't know the species yet. I'll keep you guys posted, and I haven't even reached out to any beetle experts yet. Um, if you're not familiar with the beetle group, there are 40, 400,000 species of beetles in the world, and so I do not know them all. <laughs> and even beetle experts don't know them all. We must divide and conquer. That's why it's so important to have many different taxonomists or people who study the tree of life when it comes to beetles to understand and sort them all out and know what is what. That's also why insect collections are so important. Right, so yeah, some features. You can see it has six legs. You can see it's very mobile, which makes sense for running around. Um, let me zoom and get this back in focus for us. It has those antenna in the front for feeling. It has a really big, like strong head capsule. I'm guessing it has a lot of strong muscles in its head for um, biting down. Yeah, it's really trying to stay out of the light. It also has those, there it goes again. Um, it also has those like Cersei maybe, those like butt antenna basically in the back. I don't really know what they're for. Oh, it's getting really active. Um, so it's hard to keep in focus because it's running around now, but I'll try to put it, maybe it'll settle down in a moment too. We'll see. I'm trying to get it back. I really want to get a zoom in on its head. Wait, stay still. Oh, it's moving again. Darn. All right. Well, there's our, our larva. Um, hi, Frank. How's it going? Uh, David says, just bought myself a key to the beetle larvae, larvae to family or genus level. Oh, here's your challenge. Maybe you can help us. I know that you're in the UK and I, David, and I am in the USA and Michigan. So we have different beetles and species, but sometimes there's overlap. And usually there's, we have similar gen uh, genera too, or, uh, which is, all right, let's see if we can sneak over and zoom in without it moving. Gotta be very stealth. All right, don't move. Darn it. It's moving. It's photosensitive. It's trying to stay out of the light. Doesn't like the limelight. Not welcoming its 15 minutes of fame here on HAPS TV. Um, Christine's asking, do you know what those little hairs are for? Great question. Yeah, it does. That is something that I have that crossed my mind and that I hadn't yet gotten around to remarking on. But it does have, a, have lots of hairs or an entomology. We call them CD on its body, which I'm guessing it's for um, just like giving it one more, I think they're for like mechanoreceptors, helping it perceive uh, the world around it. So if the soil moves, it can sense that a little more easily. That's my guess for that. So yeah, we call them seedy. 
S-E-T-A-E is the plural or sita for uh, singular. Yeah, I really hope this is why. <laughs> the, so it's moving around so much, it's hard to um, keep it in the frame. And this is this is why it's so helpful to have pinned entomology, like pinned specimens and ha have entomology collections with with these insects because that really enables us to take a closer look, not worry about them running around, um, preserves them for years and years so someone can study it this year and then another scientist can study it 50 years from now when we, and it, even I could come back and study it 50 years from now when we have more information. Um, let's zoom into that, that hind area. Um, oh, it's kind of hard to get in focus, but I'm working on it. Oh wow, look at how look at those hairs on there too. Did not see that from farther away. Looks like it there's probably a lot of sensing that goes on. Probably so nothing sneaks up but um, sneak can sneak up and bite it from behind when it's not looking. Because when you're in the leaf litter, you can't really see behind you if you're trailing along like that. So that's my guess. But I don't know for sure. Your guess is as good as mine. Um and David's putting CT in the chat. For, to help us out. Um, thanks for writing that out. I know that I'm someone who is largely a visual learner, um, so definitely appreciate you throwing that in there for others. Christine's saying maybe like the whiskers on a cat. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I can, yeah, and I have my cat right here. If only she could talk and tell us all about her whiskers. Hi, Mika. <laughs> um, yeah, so oh, I'm trying to get it in focus. Yeah, I feel like there's probably some interesting things going on with its back abdominal area that we don't know or, and we need an expert to guide us on beyond a general entomology knowledge. But here, I'll zoom in. Let's zoom in as much as we can zoom in and see if there's anything else that sticks out to us in regards to its morphology or its body forms. All right. So the next microscope that I'm getting times magnification. This one goes up to like, this one goes up to 65 magnification. And the one that I'm getting that's arriving today is, is like more than double that. So really excited. Hopefully it won't be too difficult to light because the deep, the more magnification you add to something, um, the more difficult lighting can get. Hi, Lars. How's it going? All right. Where'd it go? There it is. All right. Stay still. Let us see you. Let us see you. I want to zoom in on its face so you can see its little stomata or the eye spots. Oops. Oh, darn it. Oh, I don't know what that shadow is. Is that coming from... The angle, there we go, like so. Good to hear it goes past 11. <laughs> oh, did I mean to say it goes, what did I say? I forget. It goes up to 180 times magnification. Uh, the lighting is just from the microscope itself. And the new one I think has a light ring on it too. All right, let me try to uncover it and try to get its face one more time. Um, you guys can also expect to get a bonus broadcast in the next. Oh, I want to see its jaws so badly. Thanks for the super heart bars. Oh, such a shy guy. But you can kind of see the way that it's front. Yeah, the lighting's a little shiny for its to show its face. It's like what a, it must have washed its face really well today. Just, I'm just kidding about that. I don't know. Well, they probably wash their face a little bit in some ways. But let me see. Oh, it's like eating something. Or it's just using its jaws in some way at least. You can kind of see in the very corner, I can't really point it out, but you can see the dark mass cluster, which is its eye. But yeah, I think it probably has rather strong jaws based on the way its head is. Anyway, yeah, so I have to figure out, I want to figure out what kind of beetle this is. I'm guessing it might be some kind of ground beetle. David, do you have any guesses? 
Yeah, I'm not sure. But yeah, so this is our little beetle friend of the day. Um, okay, I'm going to see if I can, I feel like I'm going to be playing Jenga in a moment. I'm going to see if I can slowly lift up this debris so we can see it's, oh wait, maybe it'll move its head for us. Working with live animals can be tricky. Thanks so much, Adam, for the Mind Blown Award. Thanks so much. Um, and also, I didn't say thanks for the Appreciate Award from Wesley. David says, I was thinking ground beetle too. Yeah, ground beetles tend to be predaceous. And so these, if you're a gardener, then this falls under, under the beneficial insect category because it eats other insects and other arthropods probably. Probably slugs and other types of bugs and things. All right, let's go back over here. See, it's all the way on the other side of the cup within the blink of the eye. All right, here we go. Zoom, zoom, zoom. No, it's running away. <laughs> Here's a game you can play if you guys are play chase with the beetle as it runs around the frame. Um, David says, actually looks a bit like some of the water beetles. Yeah, like the, what is it, predaceous diving beetle. Um, I'm blanking on their names. It's been a while since I've thought about that, those groups. Um, but yeah, it does, it does look like some of the aquatic predatory beetles. Um, so yeah, this is a beetle, everybody. Beetles have a larval form too. People especially... That's, that's especially unknown, um, I'd say, in the general public that ladybugs, for example, also have a larval grub form. They're also mobile because they are predaceous. It's easy to, it's so easy to forget, and, and um, but they do. All right. I'll try to look at its head one more time, and then I'm going to wrap up the broadcast unless people have any specific questions because <clears throat> I'll probably be doing some spontaneous broadcasts in the field across um, either tonight or tomorrow because we're reaching the peak, cicada peak here in Ann Arbor. Darn it, I didn't get its head in time. <laughs> oh, too quick for me, too quick, but it needs to be quick to get its, to get its prey as it's running around in the leaf litter. So Christine says, very cool. Thanks for sharing. I love this micro view. Good. Yeah, I'm happy to share it with you. That's the thing about insects is that they are, oh, it came right back. I could have just kept it in that spot. Here, I'll try one more time to get it, get its, just its face in focus. You can see its jaws a little bit. Oh, I gotta focus. Oops, sorry for bumping the mic. Ha ha. Aha, there we go. So those are its antenna um, on the upper side of its head. And off it goes, of course. Off it goes. Not one, just like any human child, can't sit still, or many human children can't sit still. <laughs> Hi, Mark. Thanks for the Bravo Award. Yeah, so this is a little beetle. This is one of those critters you'll find in your leaf litter. If you take a look in the backyard, it was surrounded by some bugs and other bugs and slugs. And um, also, as we've been moving around and looking at it, there have been some tiny little springtails that have popped up into view as well. So um, thanks, Linda. Thanks for joining today. Uh, hey, squirrel feeder. How's it going? Thanks, Fiona, for joining as well, and Adam and Mark and David. Um, so yeah, this was the last time, perhaps. Maybe I'll come back for comfort over the next couple of weeks as I learn to use the new setup. But um, this is the last time that I'm using this current dissection scope right here. My phone's connected right there. And the next time, I will probably be using a trinocular scope where... I'll have my DSLR hooked up through that third eyepiece and connected to the computer to show you guys, connect it directly. Um, so very excited for that. And yeah, all right. Um, I'm going to sign out, but once again, make sure you like, 
uh, or heart this broadcast and share with anyone who might be interested in seeing a different type of beetle larva that we don't op otherwise don't often encounter. Usually many people will come across Oh, that was a really cute view of it walking across the screen. Um, otherwise, people tend to just come across the grubs, those those white squishy grubs. So, um, so yeah. And then yeah, stay tuned for the cicada emergence in Ann Arbor, which is huge. And I, I'm I'm collecting a bunch of tendrils and nymphs to make some tasty dishes. So, all right. Um, thanks for the super heart. Ta ta for now, squirrel. Thanks, Lars. See you later. Next time is going to be uh, squirrel feeders asking me when is next time. And the answer is that it's uh, definitely next Tuesday. Um, and then the week after next week, we also have Sips with Sebastian. And I'll pu put my schedule here in the chat here on HAPS so you can see. Um, but if you make sure you subscribe and have notifications turned on, you will get the notification of when I spontaneously go live to talk about the cicadas. Um, and also um, it's, it's, the best, it's the best way to get the spontaneous things. It's the sort of thing where, here, let me just switch the view here. It's the sort of thing where insects are very fun to share. The content is literally endless. But also when I'm showing you guys live things sometimes, or when I'm out and about myself in the field, things will happen that are time sensitive and I just have to go broadcast right there. Can't wait. Um, and so that's where those spontaneous broadcasts come from. And in the past, I've done broadcasts showing courting spiders. And in that case, the female ended up eating the male spider, RIP. Um, we Once upon a time, we saw a, a warfare between two ants on the sidewalk. These two colonies were clashing and fighting each other. So all sorts of different excitement happening in the insect world. Reporting live from the bug scope. All right. Oh, and David said he did my homework. He did his homework assignment for the spider, the, the sips and sips and spiders with Sebastian and Savage. I still have to do my homework, and that is to watch Spider-Verse. Um, so if you guys want to come in for that, make sure you watch Spider-Verse because apparently it's amazing and I need to watch it and I'm looking forward to watch it, watching it and talking about it during that next episode on the 15th. Is that the Tuesday of June? Check the schedule. All right. Thanks for subscribing, Shaz, Upla. Thanks for the cowbell award. I feel like I need like to have a sort of cowbell when I get that one. There we go. <laughs> All right. Cheers, everybody. Have a good day. And I will be back spontaneously soon in the next couple of days, within the next couple of days. All right. Bye.